Hey guys, how's it going? Let me delete this. This was a practice run. Um, here we go. We're, what we're doing today is we're making a technical drawing using Autodesk Inventor. So this is going to be really exciting, going to be really um, easy. Now we don't have to worry about lining things up, right? Getting the top, front, and right view all aligned and perfect. We'll just let the computer do it for us. So that's really nice. Now, uh, step one, whenever we're doing anything in Autodesk, right? Step one, make sure your project folder is checked. Step two is to open up the part that you want to make the technical drawing of. I'm going to do the flange plate, which I actually have open already. Now let's check this out. So we've got our, our part open right here. Uh, and we just really need to do one thing or a couple things before it's, we're ready to make the technical drawing. Uh, the first thing we need to do is check to make sure that our front is right. Now you can change uh, what's front by going by right clicking on the view cube and saying set current view as front. Now this is actually wrong. What I would probably consider to be the correct front view would be this one. Uh, that's kind of where you can see the most stuff. It's the biggest, most natural kind of view of the flange plate. Uh, but right here, the view cube is saying left. So what I want to do is, again, right click on it and go into set current view as front. And there we go. Now this is the front, right? We can look at our isometric view, make sure that's good. Top, front, right. Everything should be set there. Now, of course, we want to go to file, save, and make sure we save it uh, before we do anything else. Uh, so let's go over here and we'll go to file and we'll start a new one and we'll create a new uh, drawing. We'll create a new drawing and this pops open right here. Now, of course, uh, what I need to do in order to make this work is go to base and you can see this uh, menu pops up. Now, this has a bunch of options. The first thing right here is where you can pick the file that you want to do. Now, if, if you open it and save it and you're working in your folder, all of this will be chosen and kind of set up for you, which is really nice. You can see the front's the one there, but if you need to change it, uh, you are able to do that. How are you able to do that? Oh, by using the view cube right here, right? So I can go there, I can do that one, front, right? But if you choose the right front, there it is, ready to go for you. Now, these three options here allow you to select hidden lines, turn them on or off, no hidden lines, and uh, then here is the shading or not shading. Now for the front, I recommend not shading it and uh, having the hidden lines turned on. Now the last thing here is the scale. This looks pretty good. It fits on the page pretty naturally, but I think I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger by going 1.5 to 1. There we go. Now let's actually move this up just a little bit so it's there. It looks like it's a comfortable place on the page, and uh, we'll click OK. So there we go. There is our front view of our flange plate. Now we can click on the projected button and we can click on this one. We want to project this one. So let's go up and let's go over to make our top view and our right side view. And while we're at it, let's put a uh, isometric view up in the upper right hand corner. So let's click there. And now it still wants to create more views, right? It's still trying to create more views all over the page. Let's right click and go to create and there they all are. Now you can see where some of those hidden lines have uh, come into play, right? Like you can see from the top view, you wouldn't be able to see any of these holes, but we do have these hidden lines, right? That are showing us where they are. For instance, this main um, hole in the center right here is shown by that hidden line and that hidden line. Uh, okay, a couple more things we need to do here. One is to turn on the shading for the isometric view, which will make it look a lot better. So we'll right click here and go to edit view and uh, then we'll turn on the shading and we'll click OK. There it is. You can see the parts a little bit nicer now, a little bit easier to see. It's in color or at least it's in grayscale. Uh, so there we go. So now we have the views set up. Um, the last thing here, or not the last thing, but um, continuing on, we're going to add some dimensions to it. So we'll click on the annotate tab, click on the dimension tool, and we'll add some dimensions right here. Now, one thing that's always uh, frustrated me is that the dimensions turn out really, really small. So I think I've finally figured out how to fix that problem. It was a long time coming, but I think we know how to do it now. If we go over to Manage and we choose the Styles Editor, it takes a second to pop up the Styles Editor. Uh, and now the, the way that I've been accessing it, I think you can go to a shortcut. If you click on Text here and you go to Note Text right here and you change this to 0.32 or whatever text height you want it to be, it will change it. 
Um, but the, the other way to access it in the way that seems more natural to me is since we're doing a dimension, we might open up dimensions, choose the default dimension. Let's not save the edits. Go here, then we'll go over to text. And uh, we'll click this pencil to edit the primary text style. And now I notice that it just brings me right back here to the text. So I think you can either fix it in the dimension, going to default ANSI, or in the note text by opening up the uh, text options right there. At any rate, we're going to change the text height. We can edit it. There's some that are all pre-chosen for us. I think I like going with 0.32. That seems like a good size for me. And uh, we'll click save and close. And you can see uh, beautifully that dimension gets bigger, right? Now it's a lot easier to just uh, annotate. We can just dimension and read things. Um, let's dimension the size of this circle right here. Put another, uh, put another diameter symbol in there. Let's also put some center marks in. So here's some center marks right here. So we can make a center mark for this one and a center mark for that one. And now we are able to dimension the distance between the two of those. Did it work? Mm, something went a little haywire there. Let's dimension the distance between that one and that one. There we go, 0.165 inches. Okay, uh, now this is coming along nicely. I think this is basically all we need. There's some more stuff you can do, like adding text, notes, all that stuff. We might get into that later, but I think this will do for now. Um, so anyways, thank you for watching. Good luck and have fun.